Pesach is a very special yontav, as we learned last week. We spoke the different names that Pesach has. Chag HaMatzot, the holiday of Matzot. Chag Aviv, the holiday of the spring. Um, Chag HaPesach, the holiday that Hashem had skipped over, right? Uh, that Hashem had passed over the Jewish homes and did not kill anyone there, God forbid. And Zman Cheroten, the time of our freedom. Uh, <clears throat> we spoke about Chametz and Matzah, how it's the same letters, but Chametz is boasting of themselves. Everything is me, and that's why the opening of the letter is like going down. Um, when we think about ourselves, we are down. We don't see anyone else. Down means that it's not good. We feel high, but it's not the right high to feel. And matzah, there is the opening in the hay. When we are humble, we always have place for someone else. We can always think of someone else. We can always try to put ourselves in somebody else's shoes. It's not an easy one, but we do. And you know, as we know in Perkei Avot, it says, Al tadin et at shetagia limkomo. Don't judge your friend till you're going to be in their place. And as much as we think we are in the place of our friends, we're really not because we don't know how they felt today, what happened. You know, you meet someone and they're being arrogant to you or snappy or what. What do you know what happened? What do you know what the person went through? And many times we judge. And that's why it says don't judge anyone because you never know what they had. And many times when we do judge, and then we find out what happened. We feel so guilty. We feel so bad, you know, that we just said something nasty and really that person went through such a hard time or going through something or so on and so forth. Uh, I'll just share something. I mean, it's nothing to do with Pesach, but it, it has to do with Pesach. Because Pesach, we're learning how to be humble. Uh, we have to learn from the matzah that is thin and not boasting that high, how to be humble and keep it for the whole year and how to be careful what we tell people and many times we say things and how we take it i will mention something that happened not with somebody here in the group years ago actually i remember before i had a remy so after i did so it probably goes like 20 years ago and i was really wow. trying yudi is our sixth child in horror and i really wanted we really wanted to have more children and it just wasn't coming you know sometimes we think it's I just well, I decided it's gonna go, but you know, it's all obviously a big bracha, a big blessing from Hashem, every child. And um, and it, they have they have quite well, it's not, it's not a big gap for people who don't have a large family, but people are trying to have kids. It is. I mean, he's 23, he's 19, you know, there was four and a half years or so of a gap. And um, and I remember one of the people in Kabbat house, who's really it's, sweet, she doesn't it's, it's, for Kabbat house. Sour. She, this is sour with this color, the color because of this. This is from a fruit. Oh. Jeanette? Jeanette sour. Sweet. This is sour. sour. So you want to mute yourself? It's tamarind. Yeah. No. Jeanette? No, I went for massage. Oh, so she did with the... Yeah. Jeanette, sweetheart. This is uh, tamarind. Oh. You can see in your this thing. Tamarind. 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 Tamar. Oh. Tamar. Thank you. Thank you. And someone walked over to me and um, she said, oh, Rachel, like I was wearing, I guess, a tight skirt and I used to be very thin <laughs> once upon a time. And I guess my tummy was a little bit, whatever, looks and she goes, oh, are you pregnant? And so I told her, you know, sweetheart, really don't ask me because we don't discuss it. It's something personal. And, um, and it's, better, you know, it's, when I'll feel like talking about it, I will. And I told her, by the way, I think I told her later because I was too shy and I was very hurt. I told her later, you know, sweetheart, I'm really trying. And I just got my period. And that's why my tummy looks big. And here you're asking me. And it's like, it was like a salt and a wound because I was so upset that I found out I'm not pregnant again, uh, you know, for as long as I'm trying, you know, and um, it was just hurtful. So many times we say something to people which is the thing, and we think, oh, why were they rude? Why didn't they answer? What? We don't know how they, I mean, it's a silly example, perhaps. Maybe it's not so silly. Or, I mean, speaking about children, just because we're all women, I know also somebody once asked another person, somebody also in the family years ago, um, one sister, or one sister asked another one, whatever. She says, oh, you have such a big gap. Like, are you don't want to have any more kids or whatever. I mean, it's a personal thing. We really shouldn't be asking anybody. But sometimes people feel think they're close enough. 
And then that person answered, she, she says, you know, I just went through two miscarriages. And here you are telling me that I'm becoming modern and I'm spacing my children. And I'm not trying to get pregnant again or whatever. You know, so, you know, she was just trying to make a joke or just figure out because all her kids were one after another. All of a sudden she has this big gap. But really, I, I know it's nobody's business, but I'm saying we have to be careful what we say because here she's saying you're spacing this and she's, and she's telling us she went through to, you know, miscarriages and she's having so difficult and here you're coming you know somebody's coming and making a joke in a place that wasn't so when we are like a matzah we think more about the other person and we we just what to say what not to say how to say you know and when we are just a little bit we, we don't have to go crazy but just a little bit more sensitive and it's so important it can be in many ways here i brought things of children being pregnant, not pregnant, whatever. I'm, I'm in New York and Crown Heights, you know, can have a lot of babies around us and thank God and so, so on and so forth. But it can, in anything, in a job, somebody doesn't look good one day, the hair is not done well, the clothing, the house, whatever it is. And we never know what people are going through. They, they might have not slept the night. There was something between them and their spouse, uh, children, who knows, you know, jobs and, and, and whatever else. And, and sometimes we just get depressed of certain things, you know, and we want someone to bring us up and not to bring us down. This Shabbos is a very special Shabbos. This Shabbos, we take out from the Tor from the Aaron Kodesh, three Torahs. It's always a very opportune time to daven when we open up Darren Kodesh, the Torah. And I know that as far as the custom is, I know my husband told me in Morocco they do it, that whenever they say the blessings, whenever they want to bless people who are not well, you know, like we do Mishaberach, they open up Darren Kodesh and do it. In Bashkenazi, we do it when we read the Torah, we, you know, and Darren Kodesh actually is closed, and, but the Torah is out. So when you open up the Sefer Torah, when you open up Darren Kodesh to take out the Torah, it's a very opportune time to dive. And I remember my mother-in-law, my mother, Allah Shalom, told me that as well. She said, when they open up the Sefer Torah, please, you know, it's a very special time to dive. And Hashem is always listening. But there are the times that are opportune times that when we dive in, all the bad angels, unfortunately, that were created with our wrongdoings, I guess it's not as strong. The good angels are more strong. We know that whatever we do, whether we like it or not, but when I do something positive, when I do a mitzvah, whatever the mitzvah is, I get, I create a white angel. I create, you know, assets into in my account. Chas shalom. when we do something wrong, that is against the Torah, against Hashem, against human beings, you know, something that is wrong, we don't have to go in details. Then I create, you know, I decrease, I take the good away. And it's like the way the Torah explains, analogies, whatever, it's like a black angel that is a, a, an angel that, like the Satan, like speaks bad. And when we come to Hashem and say, Hashem, give me this, give me that, thank you for everything, give me this, then the bad angels come and say, God, no, don't listen. Look what this person has done. Look. All of us were created from the lies, from this screaming, from the whatever bad things that they, this person have done. And then the good angels come and say, no, but look, the person did so many good things. We open up the Torah, the holiness, the Aaron Kodesh, there's a lot of positivity, a lot of light, a lot of, it's a special opportune time to dive. And it's like when we blow the show for so it takes away all the bad. This Shabbos is a triple time. And it says in the Zohar, actually, it says that it's a very, very special time to daven. Hopefully, you can make it to shul. If you cannot make it to shul, we know it's a special Shabbos, you'll daven at home. But when we open up the Torah, why it's a special time to daven? This Shabbos, because it's three Torahs. Why three Torahs? One is the Parsha that we read, the Parsha of the week. So we always take one separate Torah to read the Parsha. Then there is another Parsha, another special part that we read the Shabbos because today is the 28th of the month tomorrow is the 29th of the month of other right not March the month of other um, and Shabbos is the first of Nisan hello Linda hello everyone who just joined us 
the month of Nisan, the month of Pesach. And I think I mentioned last week that Nisan, Nes, means a miracle. Nisan, Nisim, Nisan is the month of miracle. The Eden went out of Egypt and Hashem should make us many, many miracles that all the sadness should stop and everybody should ever for Shlema. And if I may, I would like to dedicate this class should actually let me go and Kim know later. Perhaps some of you have heard that a very good friend, a very good member of our community of the Chabad house, especially um, Menachem Ben Yona, Miko Kitai, Miko and Kim and the two daughters. So Miko was diagnosed with something not pleasant at all and Bezat Hashem, God willing, he'll recover and it will be good. And perhaps some of you have heard, I know I'm sure Linda, you heard and other people have heard, we're saying Tehillim, we're going, Actually, tomorrow morning early, um, our family and Sabrina, we're going to the Ohel, to the Rebbe's holy place. So we're going to daven for him there. When I was in the Rebbe's shul, I was davening for him. So his, I mean, not English name, but his nickname is Miko, but his Hebrew name is Menachem Ben Yona. His mother is Yona. So we're dedicating the class today for his all the mitzvah that all of us are learning for Pesach should give him, Hashem should give him refuah shlema, a speedy recovery. I know today in Chabaras was a big minion. People came to Davin for his health. I think there were about 25 men that came that laid to feeling on the head, on the, on the head, on the hand, Baruch Hashem, and came to Davin, especially to ask Hashem for his health. So he should have a refuah shlema and, all of, and, and everyone should be well. Uh, it's never good when you, God forbid, somebody, you know, <clears throat> is not well. But obviously, somebody in our community is our friend. So we all have to, it's some message from Hashem that all of us have to become better, have to do more mitzvahs, and ask Hashem that it was just a small test, that he should recover, he should be well, and everything should uh, be good again, amen, and be able to be able to come home and be with his family and be well. He's a young person, can hold only in his early 50s, and nobody should ever, nobody should ever, ever be sick. Chas v'shalom, God forbid. So that will be in his honor, Bezat Hashem, the class. And obviously we'll daven tomorrow at the oil and we'll daven on Shabbos. Those of you will be in shul or you tell your friends or whatever. So this Shabbos is also Shabbat Rosh Chodesh, is the first day of the month. So we take a second Torah for Parashat Chodesh that we're reading that it's Rosh Chodesh. Rosh Chodesh is a very special day always. And we mentioned that as well, that it's a special day for the women as well special day for us <coughs> because us women did not sin in this in the scene of Cheta Egel of the golden calf so Rosh Chod is a special time for the women as well and it's on Shabbat and the third uh, Torah that we take out we take out three is because it's Parashat HaChodesh we read a special parasha there is four parasha that we were reading uh, usually between before Purim and and till Pesach, we won't, I will not uh, repeat the other ones that we read, but Parashat HaChodesh is, speaks, HaChodesh HaZelachem, this month is for you. What does it mean? The special mitzvah that we have, that Hashem gave us, that we have to sanctify the moon, which means we have to sanctify the new month that we know when Rosh Chodesh is, because if we don't know when the month begins, how will we know when is Pesach? How will we know when we have to fast on Yom Kippur? How will we know, right? So there was a special way how they knew they would have um, witnesses come to Yerushalayim and say that they saw the moon very small, and then they would light bonfires to let everybody know there were no cell phones and no WhatsApps and no TV, in, you know, over 3,000 years ago and so on. And um, that's how they used to let people know, and it was a whole ceremony when the temple was destroyed then we don't have any more that method how to do it we don't have the bedin it's over 2000 years so hillel hazak and hillel the great sage he had created the calendar and he sanctified all the months it was a, a special way how to do it is a lot of astronomy a lot of it's a lot of hard math there and that's why now we don't do it but we know what rosh Chodesh is though we don't, we don't go to the Bed Din in Yerushalayim because we don't have a Bed Din in Yerushalayim. It's for most of the 2,000 years that we are in exile, the Jewish people did not have Israel. They couldn't really live there and do whatever they wanted, didn't have their own land and so on. So we have the calendar. So this is a special um, 
mitzvah how we have to do it, but when the Torah said, Achodesh Azel Achem, Rosh Chodashim, this month for you is Rosh, the head of all the months, it speaks about this month that we're starting, Chodesh Nisan, the month of Nisan, and, and it speaks about how the month of Nisan is important, and that's the first month, although we have Tishrei, Rosh Hashanah, we count the first month, but according to the Torah, when the Torah speaks, the Torah doesn't have any names for months. When you look in the Chumash, in the Torah, it says first, second, third, fourth, fifth, twelfth. That's what the Torah speaks about. So the tw in the Torah, the twelfth month is Adar, the month we're finishing now, is the last month of the year. The first one is Nisan. According to the creation of the world, the first month is Tishrei is Rosh Hashanah. I hope I didn't lose you again. So we have two ways how we count the year. In the Torah, we count it from Pesach, Nisan, because that's the first month that the Torah says, HaChodesh has said, this month is for you the first, and we became a nation. So, Tish, so Nisan is the first month according to the Torah, when the Torah counts the month. But according to the creation of the world is Tishrei, Rosh Hashanah, and then Yom Kippur and Sukkot. So that's what usually in our calendars, we always start with Tish, Rosh Hashanah, beginning of the year. But in the Torah, when it counts, it says second month or first month, we know it's not Tish, it's not Rosh Hashanah, it's Pesach. And it's amazing that we, even Pesach didn't come yet. It's going to be only in two weeks, Pesach, God willing. Uh, and all the work that we have to do is care a little bit. But the celebration already starts two weeks before. We're starting to rejoice two weeks before. We're reading a special parsha, a special section in the Torah about the new month that is coming. And it is teaching us that I know that Moshe did not come yet, unfortunately, should be coming soon. And just like on Pesach, they went out on Pesach, but two weeks before already, they started to prepare. They are ready to prepare the Korban Pesach, the the Paschal sacrifice and to, to, to look and to do this and all the things because they were preparing for their redemption. So again, this week, this Shabbos, we're reading Moshiach 100%. We're reading, we're taking out three Torahs, one for the Parsha of the week, one for Rosh Chodesh, and one for Parashat HaChodesh, for the special Parsha that we're reading and what are we reading in that Parsha? That the month of Nisan is coming, the month of redemption is coming, it's starting, and we're already starting to celebrate the redemption, even though the redemption didn't happen till Pesach started. Girls, I would like to mention a few more things uh, today. We will, um, I guess I should say, fortunately, finish the class a little bit earlier. Uh, I am in New York, as you know, and it is almost 10.30 here. Uh, it was a long day, and um, Chai Esther is actually arriving here from Toronto to finish school, and she's arriving soon in, um, I think, Canada or JFK, one of the airports, so we want to go um, pick her up from the airport, so we'll finish a little bit earlier, but I do want to mention a few other things that are very, just look at my clock, very important. We spoke about last week about the mitzvah that we have the night before Pesach that is called B'dikat Chometz, the search for Chometz. I bought it today in, I don't know where they are. Shlemela, can you bring me a B'dikat Chometz set? Shlemela, if you can find. Sorry. So we search for the Chometz. Remember we spoke that you take um, 10 pieces of bread behind it. We have to write where it is because 10 pieces also, number 10 represent the 10 manifestations of the soul. Do you have one? Do you know where it is? I got to brought it here. Maybe it's, maybe it's sitting in the car. Okay. Don't worry if you don't find it. So there, there's a custom. You take an, uh, a candle, a wooden spoon, and a feather. So it's like to clean. If you find some crumbs, you put it in a bag. But it's not all, I mean, it is kind of uh, symbolic. Oh, here. Thank you, Shlaimala. The best. Hopefully you can see it as a special bracha that we say. And in New York, they sell them ready. Hopefully you can see. So there's a beeswax candle, the yellow, and then there's a wooden spoon, I guess, to put it together. This is the custom and a, and a feather. Hopefully you see it again. I'm bringing it very close. And there is a special blessing that we say. 
So I'm bringing some if, if somebody's going to want to have it in Chabad house. Just a second, I'm just going to close the door. And um, so we're going to be doing it in two weeks. That's what I said. I don't know if we're going to have time for a class. Maybe we're going to do something short. It's going to be April 14th, right? I think April 14th. Pesach is April 15th at night, right? Friday? I think good Friday is April 15th. Yeah, all right. So this is the yes. Thursday night. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. So the Thursday night before, it's called Bedikat Chametz. We search for Chametz. Why are we doing it? Because we want to make sure that we go through all the rooms that we are using for Pesach, that we actually looked in all the drawers. And if we didn't, I tape. I don't always go through all the drawers, let's say in my bedroom. I don't have time to look through everything. And I want to make sure that it's no Chametz. So I take out the stuff that I want. If I don't have time and I put um, you know, painter's tape, the green one or whatever, and I tape so I know on Pesach I don't make a mistake. God forbid, and open it up because I'm not allowed to use it. And that's what Dikas Chometz really helps. And if you remember, I mentioned to you last week, those of you who weren't here, just mentioned quickly that uh, I know great Sadiqim, the Alter Rebbe, and other great sages that they had only one room in their house, you know, before they got married or whatever, or the people were poor and didn't have lots. And they search for chometz a whole night. What was there to search so much? But the chometz really represents our ego. So when we do the search for chometz, we have to do the physical one, obviously, to make sure there's no chometz left. And I remember to tape all the covers I'm not going to use and, and all the corners and the heat registers and whatever else, you know, when you have young kids or grandkids that come, they stuff stuff they can put things everywhere you know you clean you go who put the cookie there or whatever it is it should just be well and um but also the the spiritual one we want to be a little bit spiritual we want to think you know what let me see how can i get rid how can i search in me in my soul the things that are not good and i want to take it away just like homeless is not allowed on pesach so the ego the ego that we have the things all the things that are not good traits, how can I take it off and I and I should not have it. Hello, very nice. We have a new person that joined us today, Maureen Shahar, beautiful, Marni Amin. Uh, welcome. Hello. Oh, hi, thank you. Hi. Great. And um, the other mitzvah that I wanted to say that we have before Pesach is very, very important to the girls is selling of chametz. And I know many people have a hard time with it. They don't understand. They're saying like, I don't have to sell my chametz. What do you mean to sell a chametz? So let me try to explain. We, on Pesach is one of those mitzvahs. Chametz on Pesach is very, very strict, very forbidden. And I can clean my whole house, but I, I don't get rid of all the chametz. I still have challah in my freezer. I have lots of pasta, right? We're not allowed to get rid of it and throw it away because it's gonna be a waste. I have all my dishes and pots and pans that are from chometz and I don't make it kosher because I have other ones. Sometimes people make it kosher for Pesach, but I have other ones. Many of you have, right? Special things just for Pesach, Pesach dishes and, and, and cereals you have and, and rice and you have many, many things that we, don't use on Pesach, but it's not bad. You shouldn't throw it away. It's 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 okay. So, but we're not allowed to own on Pesach. We're not allowed to see chometz. Like you shouldn't be going to stores and just looking on bread or going to a bakery and just say, oh, this bread looks so good, but I'm not going to eat it. Then you get it's a temptation. So we don't not allowed to see chometz. We're not allowed to eat chometz. And we're not allowed to own. What do I mean to own? What, what will I do? I should throw away every year everything? Obviously, it's wrong. So the Chachomim came up with a solution that we sign a form. And it's not monkey business. It's a real form that <clears throat> called the sale of Chomets. And I know when you come, <coughs> sorry, we send it by emails. You come to Chabad House. You can sign it. And you basically sign your name, your husband's name, whoever owns the stuff. If it's just you, your business, your your house number, I mean, your house that you own and so on. And it's a real transaction. The rabbi takes it to another person, to somebody who is not a Jewish person. They understand. And they really can come and take away the stuff if they want. Usually you explain to the people that buy it, but it is a legal transaction. 
They don't have to take all the bread to, to their house and all your dishes to their house. You can buy a, a house by paper and you own it somewhere in Australia. It still belongs to you. Somebody else lives there, right? You, you understand what I'm saying? So it is a true legal transaction. We cannot do it ourselves. You cannot go to your next door neighbor who is not Jewish and say, oh, I'm going to sell you all the homes. No, we, we don't do that. You do it through a rabbi because the rabbi does it with someone else that, like I said, it's a true legal transaction. It's extremely important to do. It's a very easy mitzvah. It doesn't cost you anything. I mean, sometimes people like to give a donation. It doesn't cost you anything, but we sell our homes. And then all the homes that you have in your house, after Pesach, you can use it. All the pasta, all the breads, all the canned goods, all your dishes, all the things that you have, you can use it. The only thing is, it's very, very important to tape it, to close those cupboards so that on Pesach, you don't make a mistake, you open it up and by mistake, you can use it. So we close it all off and then it doesn't belong to you. Um, we do have, you probably got the emails, we have some stuff in the pantry that people can buy that we're going to have in the Chabaras, we're going to have the Seder in Chabaras, the, um, uh, no, um, the community Seder we're going to have in Chabaras, the first one, Baruch Hashem, for two years, unfortunately, we didn't have it, Baruch Hashem, this year, we are planning to do it. I will ask whoever is planning to come, if you can let the office know ASAP, because we want to know earlier, the better, we already hired a cook that is going to come to cook and we want to actually Carlo is helping us with that from the Metropolitan. We want to make sure that we can do the things early so it's easier for everybody. So I just want to spread the word. If you know somebody who needs a place for the city, cannot afford or need help, they can pay just a little bit, whatever it is, obviously let us know and God willing, everybody should have their Pesach needs met and nobody should stay without something for Pesach. So girls, next week I'll miss you, but we will have a class, God willing. And the and the night before Pesach, maybe we'll log in just for a short time where we'll be able to, just to wish each other maybe a good Pesach, all the things. And um, I know there's so much what to learn, but, not but, we don't have time to do it here. Please, I encourage you, read on Chabad.org, read, learn to do the Pesach as kosher, as happy, as wonderful as possible. I'm sorry for the girls who joined late. Usually we do do the class 45 minutes to an hour. But as I mentioned, my daughter is coming now from the airport and we are, I'm thinking to go uh, meet her. I just saw her, I was in actually in Toronto. On uh, Monday, I flew in because she was the main part in the play. As I mentioned to you last week, she did a fantastic job. Very nice. I hope one day when we get the video, I would love you to watch it a very, Nice story, very emotional story. It's very, very nice. And she's saying there as well. We we're so proud of her. And this Shabbos is a special Shabbos with the three Torahs. Let's enjoy it all. I know that the rabbi's message is about it a little bit longer. Thank you all for coming, girls. We should have a wonderful, wonderful uh, Shabbos, a wonderful Pesach. All the best. If you have any questions, ask and enjoy the clinic for Pesach. Let's enjoy. Let's do it with, with love, with happiness. Baruch Hashem, we have what to clean. Baruch Hashem, we have who to clean for. Baruch Hashem, we have who to cook for. Right, Eugenia? Right, um, Holly? Holly, I guess I'll see you next week at the, at the um, AGM. Uh, hello, Marnie, Dorit, Marina, Jeanette, Jennifer, Cheryl, Risha, Loredan. It's so nice to see you all. And a wonderful Shabbos. Thank you so much. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat shalom, Shabbat shalom. Thank you, I will. And regarding selling the homes, girls, let's not wait for last minute. You can do it tonight, you can do it tomorrow, you just sign a paper, you can do it on the internet, I think, as well. And then the homes doesn't belong to you, you don't have to worry about. I mean, we have to clean the rooms we use, but whatever we don't use, it's okay. We can just leave it there and we close, close it. And it's a very, very special mitzvah to do. Thank you. Have a wonderful, wonderful Shabbos, girls. I miss you all. Can't wait to go back. Is Calgary very cold, you say? No, it's getting warmer. It was cold this morning, but it's warmer now. Yeah. How much? Is it minus or no? No, I don't think so. No, it's not zero. Yeah. Because I think nope. you left. Sorry, what is it? It was plus seven today. Plus seven. Oh, wow. <laughs> New York was very cold. I took a light jacket. We're freezing here. Here, Plus seven feels like, I don't know, probably minus 10 in Calgary. I tell you, it's wow. windy and it's humid and it's cold. Mm -hmm. And you know, 
I, I love everybody tells me you must love it but you're so cold I said no no my ass is much easier to take <laughs> to dry they think we like it here oh yeah yeah Baruch Hashem I'm just trying to close this oh what happened here I just goodbye